This is my review of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Okay, so this episode is there's a lot of discuss there's a lot of discussion and backstory in this one, but uh, long story short, it's a lot of characters we sort of we may or may not have met before. Um, just kind of discussing their their version of things that have happened up to this point. Um, Rimuru is barely in the episode at all. He shows up for like five minutes at the start, and then it just goes into into discussion and lore dumping. So uh, yeah, it starts off immediately with Rimuru sending all sending his troops immediately to Eurasania. Um, and then, and then shortly after that, he sent, he proceeds to send everybody off on their merry way to actually go and, uh, well, long story short, he just sets, he sets up his rebellion, everybody, and everybody just goes home. Um, um, Gazelle Dwargon and his troops go back to, go back to, um, Dwargon, and, and, uh, the, and everybody else just kind of goes and parts of their, goes and parts on their merry's ways. And uh, Valdor is still is still um, a little annoyed that he's not allowed to actually go off and go help with the help turn the side of battle. But but and which Rimuru then repoints out that he's that he's being kept a secret until Walpurge just happens. So for that reason for that reason um, Valdor can't really go out and do anything. And Valdor and Valdora points out that it completely slipped his mind and and tries and boasts that he'll try to be more rememberable in the future. Um, at which point, Rimuru scolds him to not to let things slip his mind anymore, and that he needs to keep an eye on on things. But in any case, um, it then cut. It then proceeds to cut to Clayman's castle, where we actually learn what happened to Milam. So it starts out. So it kind of starts off with Clay, with Clayman, um, being told by Lap, being told, told by Yamza that um that a, that a none of the survivors are there because Rimuru got rid of them, moved them all to, to Tempest and kept to keep them safe. Um. And more to and more to the point, he also points out that he heard from a wandering merchant that um that about about the very very fake story that Rimuru is trying to peddle to everybody about how about how Valdor was just kind of set set loose by the Kingdom of Falmouth and the war with Tempest. Um and and long story short, Liam, and long story short, um Clayman just kind of takes that at face value and doesn't even think think too much about it. Um. All he, all he really points all he really points out is that he is that now he believes that Rimuru just kind of is just borrowing the power of Eldora and that he and that he actually did not wipe out the entire army by himself even though we know that's not true because we've actually seen the actual events of that but uh Clayman wasn't there for that he as far as he as far as he knows this is the actual thing that happened that that Veldora was set free by com by complete chance and Rimuru just kind of formed a pact with him and just kind of made it and just kind of made him his sworn friend um and, and was able to to kind of tame him and stop him from destroying everything and that's how he ascended the demon lord so so claim it so claim it claim and then boasts that he that he that he will very much very much be looking forward to Walpurgis and finally taking his vengeance out on Rimuru since obviously since obviously he doesn't think Rimuru is very powerful as a demon lord if he if he literally just ascended by by making friend by making friends with Valdora but uh he then boasts that um Valdora he then boasts he then remembers what Laplace told him about how he shouldn't underestimate his control over Milam um and 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 um Clayman alone in and alone in his chamber remarks that he remarks that he won't he won't forget and that he will be that he will be sure to keep an eye on Rimuru on Rimuru and Milam to make sure nothing goes to wrong. Um and then cuts to, and then cuts to um Fre to Frey's chamber where she's being groomed by two of her attendants and uh, and Milam walks in with a zoned out look on her face. Um and Fre and Frey spies the um, pendant that's hanging around her neck. At which point we go into a flashback and find out what actually happened to Milam. So yeah, the reason Milam hasn't really been in an episode up until now, this is sort of like her one of her few major appearances we've had this entire season. Um the main the main reason is that uh well long story short she was very much herself up until she met with Frey. Um and and long story short was she was just very happy, very bouncy very bouncy, just being her usual happy go lucky self. Um and she and the first thing she does is actually show off a present that she got from that she got from Rimuru, um, pointing out that she that Rimuru made it for her, and that she and that there actually is some little she has little dragon cozy gauntlet things. Um, she has little dragon gloves that she that she likes to wear and get, and carry around. Um, and also and also point shows Frey her entire collection of clothes and stuff that Rimuru brought her, pointing out that she's more that, that um she that she's very proud of her of her bestie and loves being and loves the fact that he gives her free stuff. Um. 
And Freya is ha and Frey is very happy about the fact that about the fact that Re that Milim has made a friend, but also remarks that she actually has a gift for Milim as well, and said gift is revealed to be the pendant. Um, and while and and Milim is none the wiser is complete is completely happy to to accept a gift from her friend. So Frey puts the puts the necklace on and and at that, that it's at that point where Milim just kind of completely zones out, is completely under under um, Clayman's control. Um, at which point Clayman walks out, walks out of the corner where he was hiding, um, and then proceeds to use, and then proceeds to now use the now completely, the now completely zoned out Milim to vent, his, effectively vent his frustrations on, on the world and everything that's gone wrong. Um, and Frey just, just merely, just kind of doesn't really, internally doesn't like what, what Clayman is doing. And then, and then tell, and then gives him a, a very much needed tip about how, about how Milim actually has a defense mechanism and that she doesn't want to be around when he accidentally sets it off by like beating the shit out of her. Um, at which point, Cl at which point Clayman then proceeds to regain his composure and points out that she's complicit. She really shouldn't, she really shouldn't be worrying about, about this kind of stuff since it was entirely, she, since she was the one who put the pendant on. And obviously she doesn't have, think very highly of Milim either, if that is indeed, and if that is indeed the case um but also points out that he be that he that now that she that now that he has the, the strongest puppet of all under his control he remarks that now he's the that now he's easily easily going to be able to use her for a lot of influ a lot of influence and a lot of things that he can do that he wouldn't be normally be able to do because as he points out in his little rant that he did while beating the shit out of a millum um, he points out that he's, he points out that among many things, he is a small, he's kind of considered a small fry in the, in the demon lord community. And obviously he need and obviously he needs Milam's influence to be able to do basically anything and initiate and, and be able to initiate wall purges at all. So yeah, for that reason, he does point out that he needs to, that he does need to keep Milam on a short leash so he can actually use her for his own personal gains. Um, and, and also points out, and also points out that, um, Fre that Frey should consider not betraying him since obviously, since obviously he now has control of Milam and he could easily just set her on, on Frey and at any time he wants and just beat the shit out of her as well. So he does point out that that's a, that, that now that he has Milam under his control, that she, that she could very well die if she's not, if she's not careful. Um, Especially since Frey is now complicit in the fact that she's brainwashed Milam. So, Mila, so with that, Frey decides to sit, say nothing and ally herself with Clayman. Although back in the present, she then remarks that Mole Purchase is going up and that is coming up and that Clayman's um, that claim that basically that Clayman's days are numbered and it's only a matter of time before he dies. So, yeah. In any case, in any case, with that, we actually then cut to um. A new to a new location that we haven't seen before, which is an it's an ice palace in the middle of well, a frozen tundra. Um, at which point we actually finally properly meet Leon Cromwell. We've seen him in a in a flashback before now, so I'm not going to show him. But uh, we we've seen him in a we've this is the first t time he's actually had an actual appearance in a, in a, in the series. So we haven't seen him up until now. We haven't seen we haven't really actually formally met him. We've only seen him through flashbacks. But uh, but he but he actually shows up to meet uh, to meet a to meet with another demon lord, um, a demon lord named Guy Crimson, um, and Guy, and from, and right out of the gate, we find out that Guy Crimson is very flirty. He he likes to flirt with with Leon, much to Leon's chagrin. He doesn't really care for the fact that that um Leon that um Guy Crimson flirts with him all the time. So, got, but in any case, after after that, but they do greet each other as old friends and are implied to be best besties. So they go, but in any case, they go to they go to meet in um in in a side chamber off where. Of where, where Guy Crimson usually holds receptions with other people, um, and they, and with that they then proceed to discuss their to discuss some things. Um, name, namely, they're going to discuss the upcoming wall purchase banquet and how Leon and how Leon isn't really interested in coming. Um, but Guy points out that he that he likely that he most likely will be coming to this one since there's a that, since there's something of very of high importance to com coming in, which is and then they proceed to go into the discussion about uh, how Veldor about how Veldora has actually been been released because of the war of Cl with Clayman. Um and they also proceed and they also go on to proceed to explain to explain that. Uh, well, long story short, they think that the fact that that um, Milam was signing off with Clay Clayman's request for wall purges is a bit odd. Um, but first and foremost, Clayman's a, we already know that Clayman's a small fry, and obviously, he, and obviously, not many people are going to take him seriously. But uh, 
There's all, but then there's the fact that Mill, I'm, I'm one of the more powerful demon lords, explained by Guy Crimson to be as old as he is, which is very old considering she's like 3,000 or something. But she's one of the, but considering that one of the oldest and most powerful demon lords in the series, um, decided to slide, side with Clayman, who is the exact opposite. Um, he can't, he can he does point out that he can't help but take notice of that and note how odd and very strange it is. And also, the, and also Leon adds into that, pointing out that Carrion's quote-unquote death was very strange as well, and obviously there's some strange things there. Um, but in case they also proceed to, to go into the explanation about how Veldor got, got released, at which point we actually meet a new character named Velzard, who is revealed to be the older sister of Veldora, um, and she, and she very much, and she mostly just joins in the, on the conversation, mainly because she's interested in, to find out what happened, well, about her brother. Um, pointing out that she stopped sensing him about two years ago and assumed he had died. Um, but as it turns out, but as, it, but as, um, Le Leon proceeds to explain, as he learned it, um, and as we, and as the, the Freemur would want everybody else to believe, um, he bought, he then proceeds to point out that there was, that the war with, that the war with Falmouth and Clayman's own interference is, was actually what set, um, Clay, was actually what set Voldora loose. Um, and then points out, and then points out that because of that, Voldora, the Voldora was set to free, but they also point out that it's strange that Voldora isn't currently rampaging considering that's what he's known for. Um, and, and when, um, and, uh, and they also proceed to point, point out that this seems like there's actually something very strange, that there is something very strange going on regarding Rimuru, who clearly, who clearly is at the center of everything, and, and is clearly at the center of everything alongside Clayman. They point out that not only was there a war with his nation, um, but they also point out that Veldor, that, that is possible, that, but Leon also pos posits that, unlike, unlike, um, Clayman, who isn't, com who is completely 100% convinced that Rimuru isn't as powerful as, they, as he claims he is, um, he posits that Rimuru was actually the one who set, who set Veldora free. Um, positing that he, positing his theory that Rimuru most likely absorbed him, unlimited imprisonment and all, and all, and then set, and then proceeded to set him three as a proxy, since they can't really sense his energy much, um, and they also point out that, uh, that, um, Veldor, that he's actually, um, that he's actually in the middle, he actually would make perfect sense of, about that, considering that he's, uh, that he's supposedly evolved to the rank of Demon Lord as well. So, they point out that that, that, that makes a lot more sense. Um, and, and then at which point, Le at which point after discussing, after discussing all that, Leon makes, makes go to leave, um, and pointing out that he's actually has to go deal with another, with another mess. Um, regarding his regarding his special summons that he's been doing, um, and points pointing out that he was actually the one responsible for um, Shizu's kids. He was the one responsible for create for turning for turning making them kind of incomplete summons so that he could kind of use them later for for a different ex for a different experiment. But uh, when re and that and also points out that the person who stopped them from who saved them is all is also responsible for kind of stopping other world summoning out of, across all the nations and that and isn't taking very kindly to it and when Gry points out that's uh, that's odd that Leon isn't tr isn't dealing with the person person personally pointing out that he could very easily kill whoever it is that's causing him problems um he then proceed Leon then proceeds to explain that it was actually Rimuru who saved the kids which oh which only further catches Guy's interest pointing out that pointing out that, Re that if Rimuru is indeed that powerful, then it's going to make for a very interesting wall purchase indeed. Um, and with that, Le Leon decides Leon decides to take his farewell and then leaves. Um, at which point, well, at which point, Guy uh, and then proceeds to offer Vel Velzard a seat, uh, a, a position at wall purchase, pointing out how interesting it seems like it's going to be. And but Velzard decide initially, well, initially kind of excited to go, does does decide to turn it down, pointing out that while she is interested to figure out what happened to her brother. Um, she, all, she points out that she can't really stand being around demon lords and decides that she's just going to keep an eye on thi on things for Guy while he's gone. Um, and Guy kind of accepts that and also points out that he feels like everything is going to be exciting, pointing out that, pointing out in his own words that for the first time in centuries, his heart is actually racing and is interested to see what, what kind of, what kind of person this Rimuru actually turns out to be and then, and then, and then toasts Wall Purchase. So... Yeah, this uh, this episode is, as I said, is very. Rimuru only appears in it for like five for like five minutes at the start of the episode, but uh, he, for the but a lot of this but a lot of this is people just kind of getting caught up to date with what's going on with the, with the rest of the world because well obviously we've seen everything from from Rimuru's perspective, but 
obviously this this episode just has to kind of not only the the main thing the main thing that that we that is actually revealed in this episode is how Milam actually came under Clayman's control. So that's interesting, and I'm interested to see how, what what actually comes out of that. Since obviously Milam is a very powerful demon lord, and obviously she shouldn't be controlled so easily by Clayman. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. But more to the point, um, now got now two very powerful demon lords. One of which is affiliate was affiliated with Shizu and actually knows about R Rimuru. Um, two of they're both they're both very much aware that R of what Rimuru is doing and also and now seem to know that or caught up on how Rimuru is actually handling the rest of, handling all of this. Um, and how he's actually and how he's actually seems to be kind of kind of working his way up the ranks of to become a, a more powerful version of himself. So. Yeah, it's very. It is very interesting, and I am and I am looking forward to Wall Purchase because all of this is is clearly going to come to a head at some point. Um, and also there's the war that's going on, but we haven't actually seen that yet. Um, I'm I'm interested to see how all of that is going to actually come come into play later. But for right now, uh, that that's gonna do it for my review. That time I got me coming in as a slime. What did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below, or over on my Discord server. Link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, also, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below. Um, if you want to keep up with me with what's going on the channel, that's the best way to do that. Um, also, be sure to check out my Patreon to help support me in future projects. Um, it's only a couple bucks a month, so I do recommend checking that out. Um, and also, be sure to just go check out my go and check out my um, Twitch down in the description below as well. I stream every Sunday on that, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to go check that out. Um, and finally, if you want to see more content from me, then be sure to check out the videos linked in the end screen. The top video is the most recent video, it may or may not be this one, whereas the bottom video is a video recommended to you based on what you've already seen from me. So, if you want to try something new, or see more of what you like, then be sure to check both of those videos out. But, regardless of whether or not you do any or all those things, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!